Well, these are some very interesting times we live in, folks. You know, I was born in 1952. And here we are in 2023. And I don't know this place anymore, this United States of America. Uh, you know, I think I lost my mother around 84. And I just couldn't imagine her waking up today, you know, if she was alive, and seeing what's going on. I'm not talking about the technology. I think every generation expects technology to advance to some degree or another. But I'm talking about the, the sheer madness um, that we have doctors and psychiatrists. We have business people. We have uh, professionals in the um, media, academia, teachers, government officials accepting this nonsense about uh, people who are assigned a sex when they are born but they determine what their sex is later on. I mean, it's, 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 it's completely beyond the pale. And I think also when she was uh, alive there were still politicians on both sides of the aisle that cared, some of them, more about the country than they care about <clears throat> necessarily their political party. But that's not the case anymore. You know, this, this, this country is completely divided. Uh, the political parties, there is no, hardly any separation except for some Republicans in name only, what we call rhinos, that fall to the Democrat side. But even the Democrat Party uh, from my youth is not the same party it was. You know, I talked about the uh, 45 goals that the communists had to take over America. It's, I got that out of the book, A Naked Communist, by W... Cleon Skosin. You should read that book. And, I, and I'm not sure of the number, but I think number 15 is to go was to take over one or both political parties in the United States. I think they've taken over the Democrat Party. I think without a doubt they've taken over the Democrat Party. Um, they've had a uh, Another goal is to um, infiltrate the churches, which they have absolutely done. They've absolutely infiltrated many of the churches, <clears throat> and they will promote pornography, promote, promote uh, homosexuality, promote all these things that are antithetical to a biblical worldview. Anyone that's alive today can see this. And the problem, one of the major problems is that people who identify as Democrats, from my perspective, and they say that they're Christians, seem to subordinate their Christianity to the philosophy of the Democrat Party. And it, and it blows my mind. These people, they say they believe in God. They say that they believe in Christianity. But they support a party that is for killing babies in the womb. It's been that way since 1973. I think we've killed over 60 million babies, killing babies in the womb. And now they support this, this they, they support it in 2015 when Obama, um, help usher in the same-sex marriage and before you guys say oh, well the Supreme Court the Supreme Court uh, approved that, yeah but that was after Obama said he would no longer defend DOMA which was a Defense of Marriage Act that was an act that was signed on by both Republicans and Democrats during the Clinton years 
where they wanted to defend marriage. So after Obama gave up DOMA, then it ushered in these left-wing politicians and the Supreme Court finally just castrated marriage. Matter of fact, I used to live in California. And before that all happened, we had a couple of elections to defend marriage. And the first one, as liberal as California is, the people voted to defend marriage. But then um, it was rejected in some courts in California. They said that in order to make that happen, we have to change the Constitution. Okay, we changed the California Constitution, voted again, and still defended marriage. And then some judge said, it's unconstitutional. So they threw it out in California first. And the only reason why they get away with stuff like this is because my Democrat friends don't stand up. My Democrat friends, whatever the Democrat Party says to do, they do. Whatever the Democrat Party tells them to accept, they accept. I mean, right now, you know, it, it blew my mind. You know, every time I turn around, we got these sports going on. And, uh, and girls' sports, you know. And I remember how the Democrats used to talk about, we're for the women. We're for the poor. We're going to, you know, we want women to get past this glass ceiling and all this other nonsense. And we want them to have the equal pay, equal this, that, and the other. And now... You got women that are being robbed by men pretending to be women. And I don't hear these Democrats say anything. I think in Miss Nevada of 2021 was a dude. A transgender dude. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, think about it. The best woman out there is a man. Now, real men only want real women real men don't want no fake woman no 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 artificial woman they don't want that stuff they want the real deal but my democrat people you know I, I try to tell them stuff or i try to help them and it's silence you know just like you know i, I made a post a few days ago i went and bought gas it was four dollars and 39 cents a gallon now, that might not seem like a lot to you, particularly if you live in California. I don't live in California. I live in Arizona. But when Trump was in office, I paid $1.99 a gallon. So now it's over 100% more. And what do I hear from my Democrat friends? Nothing. Now, I remember years ago, when I first started on social media, I was trying to talk to this Democrat guy. And I said, look, you know, he's a black guy. Because most black people were, were indoctrinated to believe that the Democrat Party cares about black folks. And that the Democrat Party is there to help us. And that the Republicans hate us. And matter of fact, when I grew up, no one ever told us the truth. We were led by various means to believe that the Republican Party was a party of slavery and Jim Crow and, and segregation and all that crap when it was really the Democrat Party all along. And once you search the history books, you can see it was the Democrat Party in charge of everything. And then when the information started getting out to the masses that it was the Democrat Party, people, uh, they... Uh, they, they they came up with a, a brand new lie saying that they switched sides. Oh, they just, you know, you know, when Nixon was in the office, they, they, uh, the, the Republicans became Democrats and the Democrats became Republicans. Now, does that make any sense? Does it make any sense at all? Why would you, if you won a war, <coughs> 600,000 Americans died in it, your side won. Now all of a sudden you want to take on the name of the other side. You want to be a loser. It, it makes no sense. And there was no truth to it. But it was just the continuation of the lies the Democrat Party gives people. And they want you to believe this stuff. So what happened was I told this guy I could prove to you 
Because the Democrat Party was a party of slavery, Jim Crow, and some rough road here, and all that stuff. And he told me, don't waste my time. And it baffled me, and I thought, wow. I wouldn't want to be being lied to, cheated on, uh, used if I knew that that was happening to me. I want to know the truth. I want to make sure I'm not getting screwed. <laughs> but he didn't care. He was, he did not want to, he said, don't waste your time. I had another friend that was so happy that Obama was, was, was elected that he cried. He said, he, he, he said that, you know, I didn't think that I would live long to see somebody that looked like me uh, become president. And my thought was this, well, wow. So are you telling me that if some black man come knocking at your door at two o'clock in the morning and you don't know who the hell he is, you're gonna let him in because he's black? It, it doesn't make any sense. You elect a person based on what they stand for and what you stand for, not the pigmentation of their flesh. And so anyway, that guy too, he never wanted to listen to anything. It, it reminds me of the Matrix, you know, where you got the red pill or the blue pill. The blue pill, you stay in the, the Matrix and you don't know nothing and you just live in this fantasy world. Or the red pill, where you wake up and see what's happening. Well, apparently, you know, in the late 80s or, or early 80s, I don't even remember when exactly, I woke up. I started looking at the information. And here recently, a few days ago, I put out a video about transgendering our kids, how bad it is, and, and it's crazy. And I had this other fellow, a guy that I actually know and grew up with. Now, the one that many years ago, I didn't know, it was just like a Facebook dude. But a guy I grew up with saw my post where I was stating that I was going to watch or I was going to be talking about uh, transgendering children and sanity. And he wrote me a message that said, well, I can't listen to anything you, uh, that a Trump jockstrap says. So this dude calls me a Trump jockstrap. I'm 70 years old. I'm a grown man. He's a grown man. Matter of fact, I think he's 71. Now, I don't think for one moment that everybody would agree with the things that I say. But I would think, or I would hope, that when you become an adult and you've lived a few years, you would understand what civility is. You would understand um, that there's ways to communicate with people. But, we, but this guy was talking like we were still in high school. And, 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 and he never once said, well, Sam, why do you think that way? Or Sam, why would you support somebody like Trump? I don't understand it. And if he would have asked me that question, I would have told him quite clearly. I said, matter of fact, I would have asked him a question. I said, before Donald Trump ran for president, what did you know about him that was so bad? Or did you know anything about him that was bad? I mean, he had a TV show on for 11 years, and I think it was top rated. Uh, what's that show? Uh, the Apprentice. And I never watched it, because I don't watch reality TV. But this dude was highly favored amongst all people, as far as I know, and many black people. And, you know, there's pictures of him with Muhammad Ali, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Oprah Winfrey, all the black Snoop Dogg, all these people. They were all friends of his until he decided he was going to run for president. Then all of a sudden he became evil incarnate. He was going to run as a Republican. I would venture to say if he decided to run as a Democrat, they'd have probably loved him. But when I ask people this question, I, I get no answers. I get no answers. It's like they're in that matrix and that media feeds them, oh, this guy is evil, so now you have to say this guy is evil. I mean, the media got so much control over people. It's just like during the 
the summer of, of love in 2020 when they were burning down everything, where the media had the audacity to stand in front of a burning building and say that, oh, it's mostly peaceful demonstrations. I mean, these people were burning down buildings. And they will say it's mostly peaceful demonstrations. And you get these politicians that say stuff like, well, it's only buildings. You know, they're insured. Who, you know what happens when you, you burn down your community and it's insured? The next person that comes in there has to pay way more for insurance because of the history. And then if they have a retail center and they open up a store or something, then people uh, that shop there is going to pay higher prices. And then they get pissed off because these folks are charging them higher prices. Or they never build again. And then the same folks that burnt down their community got to drive miles further to get the same services they could have got off the top if they wouldn't have burnt down their community. See, all this kind of stuff is nonsense. But it seemed like the Democrat Party loved them burning down the community. They loved burning down anything. In Portland, Portland, Oregon, they, they took over a city block or something. And then you got these, these riots and, the, and, 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 and this anarchy that's going on where these left-wing uh, uh, attorney generals will not prosecute people. Now in Portland, they're getting rid of all the Walmarts. All the Walmarts are leaving. I mean, I don't understand why people, Democrat people, don't raise up and say what is going on. Why do they accept this nonsense? Why do they accept millions of people being let in this country? And those millions of people are going to be competing for the very jobs that the poor people complain they don't have enough money for or enough jobs. And we're paying them, and that's going to raise your taxes even higher. Taking care of these folks that don't belong here. But like dutiful robots these democrats continually vote for these people and they continually call republicans the bad guy and they continually call people like me an uncle tom when they don't even when they have besmirched uncle tom and they don't even know who he is let me tell you who uncle tom was uncle tom was a character in a book by Harriet Beecher Stowe. He was a he was a slave, but he was a Christian, a righteous man, an honorable man. And they talk about he like Uncle Tom as a sellout. No, Uncle Tom died protecting folks that ran away. And he would not tell the master where those people went. Uncle Tom was a hero. But in the 1930s, the Communist Party decided that they were going to make Uncle Tom a monster and they want to get black people to start calling other black people who do not operate the way the party wants them to operate sellouts and Uncle Toms so now you got black people calling other black people Uncle Toms and they don't even know why because they don't know the history of Uncle Tom and they don't know the fact that the communist party put all this stuff in play because the Communist Party put in play the idea of continuous racial animosity and anger between blacks and whites as an effort to help destroy this country. Read Color, uh, Communism, and Common Sense by Manny Johnson. You can get it on Audible, you can get it on Amazon.com, or you can get it free on the Internet. And the Naked Communists by W. Cleon Skosin. And educate yourself. Start understanding what's going on. This is a big time chess game of destruction for this country. And too many people don't know that they're being played. Particularly those people that don't, you, you, they don't want to know nothing. You can't tell them nothing. But it's amazing to me 
that it will take a fool not to see that your prices have been going through the roof. Anybody with any sense know that they were better off during the, uh, the Trump administration than they are now. Matter of fact, when Trump was president, we had the lowest uh, employment rate in history, or shall we say, unemployment rate. We had the highest employment rate of all factors and people were making money and the prices were low and gas certainly wasn't anything like it is now but now we got these democrats jacking up the gas prices wanting to get rid of gas stoves now i don't know about you but i don't like electric stoves they want to get rid of gas stoves they want to get rid of uh, gas cars and that makes no sense because an electric car is only going to go so far and the electric car, you know, listen, people, how do you think they charge that sucker? You get over here. You know, electricity just doesn't come out of nowhere. They got to either use hydro, which we ain't got none, coal, natural gas, or nuclear to charge the electricity. So here we are, we're going to charge, a, 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 you want to get rid of gas to get an electric car, so we got to use electricity that's going to be operated by gas or coal to make this electric car work. That's going to work less efficiently and end up polluting way more than what we got now. This is insanity. But this is what we got. We got an insane world right now. We got a world where we want to say that I can identify as a woman. Aren't I a pretty woman? You know, I mean, we, we, we got a world now where men will compete against, I mean, girl, boys will compete against girls and beat them in everything. And, it's, and I don't hear the feminists argue one bit about it. What happened to all them folks? They're a bunch of fakes too. So anyway, I was on my way to get a few things at Home Depot. I thought I would rant. And I think there's other folks that could probably, probably think just like me. We need to fix this stuff. We need to save this country because it is going, it's going to implode, people. It's going to implode unless we step up. This is Sam Tolley, and I'm out.